from the Maple View Animal Hospital Studios, this is the WHTC Morning News with Gary Stevens and Peg McNichol on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. Welcome back to the WHTC Morning News for this Tuesday, April 21st. Tuesday mornings, we have a chance to chat with the man who represents Allegan County in the halls of Congress. In terms of the U.S. House, he is Representative Fred Upton. He's on the other end of our Zoom connection from his base of operations in St. Joe. Fred, good morning. Hope all is well with you and the family. Good morning. All is well. I actually uh, saw on a little FaceTiming my little grandson this morning about 15 minutes ago, and he's smiling and moving around. He can, he can do push-ups almost. He's uh, almost three months old now. Uh, but before we get to some of the issues involving Congress, a uh, nice uh, uh, act by one of the more famous members of the Upton family with Justin Verlander and uh, Kate uh, donating uh, some medical equipment to Detroit. Well, it really is. You know, his, his heart's always been to Detroit. Uh, Kate and Justin uh, still have a place there. Uh, Michigan's their home. You know, my brother, his, his father-in-law lived two doors down from me in St. Joe, so they're you know, they've always looked out for our community. They're, they're good people, the class act, and I'm wearing a base. Maybe I should have put on my tiger hat this morning. That's, but that's okay. That's okay. You know, we, we know you're, yeah, you, we know your affinity for the Cubs, and, uh, uh, you know, hopefully they'll be flying the W flag at Wrigley Field uh, uh, sooner than later. Yesterday, you, along with Debbie Dingle from Dearborn, a mem two members of the uh, Problem Solvers Caucus, you got the checklist out uh, that communities, that governments can be used to uh, be able to uh, uh, restart the economy safely but effectively. Well, Don't that's mind. right. This is yeah, this is about a five or six uh, page uh, list that uh, we've been working on it as the Problem Solvers Caucus for the last uh, couple of weeks, actually. We unveiled it yesterday, press conference on Zoom. I think we had 100 different press outlets who were there. Maybe you were uh, part of it. We took uh, questions and answers. Uh, but at the end of the day, workers want to be safe. Communities want to be safe. We thought that this is a, a pretty good document uh, that states and localities uh, can take a look at. You can find it on my website, upton.house.gov. It'll be all right there. But, you know, we, you know, for me, this is a big issue. When we're consumers, we need to have these masks on, uh, not only to protect ourselves, but also the, the employees that we work there, uh, that work there. Uh, I talked to a number of employers uh, this last week on the phone. Uh, they've made accommodations, as an, as an example, Transmatic is still in operation in Holland. Uh, I talked to those folks, uh, I guess it was Friday last week. They have an operation in China as well. So they've learned from there and they've already made a number of different accommodations on the, on the workforce uh, level. Obviously, they're, you know, folks, if they feel sick, they need to stay home. Uh, but masks, gloves, plexiglass shields, they actually have a company in our district that's now applying for a patent for some plexiglass shields to protect workers. They're very excited about it. There's a run on the material for them to actually make it. It's, you know, it's, it's creating jobs, but it's also protecting people. So those are the things that we need to be smart about as the economy hopefully begins to open and, and we begin to feel safe again, particularly when we go outside instead of working out of our kitchen like I am today. Last week, we, um, uh, we chatted with Bill Heising a, a little bit earlier than normal, Fred. Uh, because he was among members of, uh, I believe, the Michigan delegation that had a conference uh, uh, a call with Governor Whitmer before she uh, uh, had one of her briefings. And uh, you, of course, uh, and other members of the Republican members of the uh, Michigan uh, congressional delegation sent a letter to Governor Whitmer echoing concerns about uh, uh, the Stay Home, Stay Safe executive order extension and a little bit of its uh, uh, reach about this. Um, what about the governor's authorities over sales? We had a Twitter ask question about uh, an overreach that there's possibility on that. And granted, uh, uh, states can do what they want, but as a member of the House uh, Energy and Commerce Committee, that's also within your purveyance as well, Fred. Well, she has the right as governor uh, with this exact order. I'm not a, a former state rep, so I don't, I'm not all involved in the nuances of the state law, but as I understand it, she does have the right to do that. 
what our message was, and we talked a little bit last Tuesday, and I'm sure Bill talked about it on, on Thursday, was that we need to be smart about it. And there's one thing, you know, and, and I heard Roger Vickery, a good guy, uh, you know, in a news report a few minutes ago as well, but, you know, to allow, here, here's a couple of examples. I, I, you know, to allow counties, uh, county uh, uh, landscaping crews to be able to work, they're, they're doing that, yet, uh, the guy down the street who has an independent business and he works all by himself and the landscaping is, is denied. Uh, being able to work on a roof or a gutter when you're by yourself, a home builder, maybe it's a one or two man operation in terms of what they're doing, refinishing a bathroom, whatever it might be. It just seems like they went, you know, being on a canoe and a kayak's okay, but having an outboard motor on a little lake, not okay. I mean, we need to be smart about this. We need to understand what social distancing is. Uh, as I travel a little bit around the district, I don't get out of my kitchen much, uh, but as I look down the street, as I go to the grocery store, the post office, a few things like that, most people are understanding they got a mask on, they're very cognizant of, of other people that are there, and the, the carry out meals, very respectful in terms, you know, you pull up to the curb, you've already paid for it on your, on your credit card, there's some distancing, is, is people hand you the pizza or whatever it is that, that you've ordered. And you know, you're, you're, you're trying to, to bring things slowly back. So, you know, I, I'm expecting that the governor is gonna have some uh, accommodation, I guess you could say, to, to what our reasonable, constructive, uh, I won't call them demands, but approach was uh, when she begins to open things up in another week or so. One other thing, too, before we took the air with this particular segment, Fred, you heard a little bit of uh, Peg's newscast and uh, uh, former Democratic uh, uh, congressional hopeful Dr. Rob Davidson, um, who challenged Bill Heisinger two years ago. Uh, he wants a national testing program to restart the economy. Is that something that is within the purveyance of the government or because of constitutional? That might be a more of a state's thing. Well, we're trying to help the states. You know, right now we have a little glitch. Uh, the money for the PPP program, Paycheck Collection Plan, was exhausted uh, a bit early, uh, as, as we expected it to be. Uh, it needs to be renewed, and that is the debate that we're going to see, uh, hopefully, uh, by Thursday this week. Uh, but as part of that, there's $25 billion more for testing for the states. I think everyone agrees that we want to help the states do that. It's an important element of that. The president supports it. Uh, that's not where the glitch is in, in terms of uh, trying to get things done. But uh, we're hoping, and I talked to Bill yesterday, we're hoping that we, we actually can have a vote as early as Thursday in the House to restore, to replenish the PPP program, uh, all designed, of course, to help our small businesses protect their employees to make sure that they've got a, a place to work and a paycheck in, in the interim. But the testing part is part of that, and obviously it's going to help the states. One final thing, speaking about PPP, it looks as if maybe the Senate might be voting on uh, more money for that. Uh, are you getting any guidance from uh, uh, the House leadership that you might have to make another uh, drive down uh, uh, to Washington to maybe meet this week on that? Yep, well, that's the ex options that we're exploring. For a little while, we thought the vote might be as early as tomorrow. Uh, but now they're saying if, if the Senate passes it this afternoon, we will not vote on it until Thursday. So, yep, I'm looking at all my options. How am I going to get back there? We are going to have a recorded vote. The other issue that we're taking a look at is, you know, we have to vote in person. You know, I got a voting card. You got to be there on the floor. I put it in the machine. You got to hit the right button. We're exploring in case of an emergency like this pandemic that you can actually empower one of your colleagues vote by vote tell him or her exactly how you're going to vote on that specific amendment or bill not only tell that colleague but also the clerk of the house so that that the vote is cast the way that it should be and we've got a number of members that have tested positive that are self-quarantined uh, some that are, are uh, recovering actually uh, from this uh, i'm not sure that they're ready to go back to work yet and actually can be there. You've got other, you know, family members, people taking care of, you know, different folks. So we'll not have all 435 members of Congress there on Thursday if, in fact, we vote, because you've got to have those family considerations as well. But 
we're going to be exploring, hopefully it'll be bipartisan, how we might be able to vote remotely in a critical time like this. He is Congressman Fred Upton. He joins us every well, most Tuesday mornings to talk about what is going on in Washington. But of course, he is from uh, uh, his base of operations with St. Joseph. Fred, thank you for joining us on the Zoom connection. If you do have to make the trip to uh, Washington, we wish you a safe journey. And we look forward to chatting with you again next, uh, thir next Tuesday morning, sir. Be taking my mask with me. Sounds great. Thank you very much, Fred Upton on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.